Hello everyone, my name is Kwamea Ross and today I'm keeping it real with you or 100 or whatever you all call it. I'm in my 40s so I'm not up to date with all of the current slang and lingo. I mean, my kids are the ones who keep me young. But I just wanna go into detail about a lot of things that's been going on in my life. A lot of thoughts I've been having and I just, like like they say, I wanna just keep it real. Now, before I do that, if you're here just to know, you know, to dig up something on me or to conjure up something and just to, to go back and report something just to try and cause problems in my life and hindrances, then this really is not for you. So I would suggest you turn the video off, please, and, and go watch someone else or do something else with yourself because this is about positivity and uplifting and I don't need any negativity here. We don't want the negativity. now. After saying that, like I said, I'm going to keep it real. And many years ago, you know, the Lord had put it in my spirit that he was going to give me a women's ministry. And this was back in 2007. And I was very excited to have a women's ministry because I wanted to be used by the Lord. As you all know, I went through so much in my life where I walked away. I had been sexually abused. I had been introduced to pornography and I lived a life of promiscuity. I was rejected by my family. I was teased in school. I was mistreated. I felt isolated and alone. And I dealt with a lot of things in my life that the Lord had helped me overcome. And so... <clears throat> I wanted to be used by the Lord in, in, in you know, miraculous ways and help other people overcome those same hurdles and, and overcome the obstacles that I face and, and, and just minister to them. Now, I do not cover up anything I've done in the past, even though, you know, I'm not proud of a lot of the things I've done, but that is part of my testimony. It shows how the Lord has changed me and how he's transformed me. And I'm not going to, you know, remove my testimony. I'm not going to let anything discredit my testimony. But when I was ready to be used by the Lord, I was happy and excited to have this women's ministry. I had a completely different idea or view of what this ministry would be. And it was completely opposite what the Lord had in, in mind for me. So when I started being persecuted, when I started being slandered, when I was mistreated, where people were turning them against me and doing everything in their power to make me look bad, when I was rejected, when I was attacked, um, spiritually when people were putting out curses on me and doing everything in their power to hinder me and stop me from moving forward i just didn't understand it and, and it was enough to almost make me want to walk away but i kept going i kept going even when you know demonic fat was put all over me to the point where i couldn't lose any weight where at the point i was just gaining all of this weight to the point where i had my hair burned out literally burned out to the point where i even lost my children and, you know, I went through all of these things and the Lord was there with me, even during the times where I just said, Lord, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to do it. And I still kept going. The Lord was prompting my spirit to keep going, but nothing hurt me more, broke me down more than the sexual abuse that I sustained. And that's what I want to talk about today because, you know, I'm going to be brief because my daughter is coming to visit um, soon and I want to get things to prepared for her. I want to be there to, you know, uh, meet my daughter and get her breakfast and everything started. So the thing is, I lost my children because of this. So talking about this now can jeopardize my visits with her. They just resumed after, you know, being cut off for months. And, you know, when I speak out, it's because I want my voice to be heard and I possibly can help others. But as y'all know, I talked about, you know, a story before about when the Lord showed me that a man was doing things to me, sexually abusing me and violating me in the spiritual realm. And when I say spiritual realm, there are people who can utilize certain resources or, or, or I don't know, demonic spirits that are given to them, demonic powers that are given to them by Satan. And they can do certain things, supernatural things that, you know, most common men cannot do. And, you know, I'm not saying this happens to a lot of people. There are, you know, some people that experience these things, not many, but there are people who experience things like this. Now, I wasn't happy when that was revealed to me that these things were happening and when I spoke up because the things started happening to my daughter when we spoke up to report this as a result they took my daughter from me and it's more like I saw it as a punishment to her and me instead of doing something about this man they said I was crazy discredited my story my experience and everything I've gone through and, and took my daughter from me now recently I have been posting things about a woman who had been following me around in the spiritual realm, doing things to me, taking my features, uh, copying and emulating everything thing I've done for years. And, you know, I don't like to put people out there, but the thing is, this stuff is going on. And I've been feeling a certain way, but I didn't know anything. I never suspected anything until recently. The Holy Spirit did reveal to me that this woman had been sexually violating me at night while I'm asleep. And for a long time, 
for days, I'll say for days, I was hurt. I was very hurt. I mean, this woman has done so much to me. I could deal with the fat. I could deal with all the eczema on my skin and to the point where I have to wear sunglasses or put all this makeup on my face to cover up you know, the dark patches and everything all over my skin, which is, you know, doing a poor job of it, as you can see. But all these things that the woman had been doing to me, you know, taking things from me, transferring fat to me, putting out curses, put X on me, following me in the spiritual realm, copying, emulating everything I do, going back and following things that I say and things that I write and, and putting it on, you know, their social media, portraying it as their own thoughts and their own opinions and ideas. And I asked God, I said, Lord, you know, remove the person from my life, please. Remove them from my life. Because I don't know why I have to deal with this. I asked for a woman's ministry, but this was not what I asked for. I didn't ask to be attacked and assaulted in the spiritual realm. I didn't ask for people to put fat on my body or to follow me around and emulate me. And the Lord was just letting me know, you know, this is part of my ministry that I had to pray and so I kept praying for this individual but when the Lord finally revealed to me that this person had been coming to me in my sleep and doing things and violating me it crushed me it hurt me in the spiritual realm it took a piece of my soul for me and for days I didn't speak to God I was just so angry and hurt because it's like Lord how could you do this to me how could you do this to me it's like I got over it the first time you let me be violated and it took a long time to get over it when that man was violating me but you let this happen again. And then not only that, you let a woman do this. These are homosexual acts that are being committed against me. And it's a violation of my rights. This is something that you say in your Bible is an abomination and it's perverseness. And so I, I couldn't say anything because it's like, Lord, I went into ministry to help young women and, and children. That's what I went into ministry for. I didn't go into ministry to have my body just at the use of whoever wants to take it whenever they feel like it. I didn't come into ministry to have anyone do whatever they want to me and, and it just goes and, and there's no consequences and, and I just had to sit here and just take it. I didn't go into ministry to have people put fat all over me, to have people lying on me, slander me, saying I'm crazy, to have people taking my children from me, to have people coming in the middle of the night when I'm at my most vulnerable state asleep and, and sexually assault me and violate me. And and I, I I just couldn't fathom how a righteous holy God could allow these things to happen. And I was just so upset with God and I was hurt. I felt betrayed. I felt violated and betrayed because no one, no one has the right to take someone's innocence or someone's body and, and violate them against their will. And no one should have to go through that. It's even a, a prophet or someone who's a servant of God. And I said, Lord, you're supposed to be protecting me. Why would you let this happen? And why are you telling me about this? I thought this has already happened. He showed me that it happened more than once. And, you know, I thought things I, I never knew for sure. But, you know, you, you can tell when something's done to you. Can You know your body. I would wake up on some days and, and I would feel strange, like something was done and I didn't know what it was. I would have these dreams and I didn't understand it. I would start getting these thoughts and I didn't know completely what was going on. So. You know, I just kept going on with my day. I would pray and try to cover myself before going to bed at night and asking the angels to guard me. But when the Lord finally revealed to my Holy Spirit that this was going on, it, it, it just disgusted me. And I was so angry at him. I was so disgusted that I was ready to walk away. I actually thought about finding some type of witch doctor or someone who could put protection spells or something on me to cover me. Because I told the Lord, I said, you know what? If you're not going to protect me, I will find someone who will. And that's how I felt. I felt like I, I can't do this anymore because it's, it's, it's wrong. And he was showing me things, you know, I know that this person had been abused before and, and all these things, but I said, Lord, that that's no excuse. It's no excuse because you know what? I've been abused. I've been hurt. There's many people who've been abused, but they don't go out abusing other people. And I felt like, you know, this is something this person's doing just to be vindictive on purpose and push their sins off on me and, and to, to, to mistreat me because they were mistreated. And I get tired of the fact that uh, there are adult men and women out here who don't want to go to God, who want to who throw themselves a pity, pity party and make themselves a victim and go out and want to hurt other innocent people just because they've been hurt. It's like, it's time to break the cycle, not continue it. So I was upset at the Lord for a long time. And I went days without speaking to him. I was just so hurt. I didn't know what to do. And finally, the Lord put in my spirit, you have to forgive her. You have to forgive her. And so that's when I said, okay. I realized that, you know, 
even though this woman did these things to me, that this woman was this level of disturbed because of the abuse that they sustained. And that is why I want to speak out because this abuse has been going on for many years. For many years, children have been being sexually abused, sexually assaulted and, and mistreated. And it's been covered up, especially in the church. You cover it up. You don't do anything about it. And it's not helping the children. If anything, they grow up unhealthy and messed up and emotionally and mentally unstable, imbalanced adult men and women, especially if they don't seek God for help. Now, that does not put you off the hook. It does not mean you, you have the justification to abuse someone because you have been abused. You need to do what it takes because even though you didn't get any help, even though people around you have failed you, your family or whoever else, who was it was, did not help you, did not speak up for you, did not save you, you need to make the decision today to go to God and get, get deliverance and help from him. These are perverse spirits that are making people do these things. See, Satan is, is, a, is, a, is a god, a, a devil who wants nothing but to destroy. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy. And he would do everything in his power to steal the innocence of the children. He would do everything in his power to steal and destroy your destiny, even your testimony. So when the Lord showed me I had to forgive this person, this woman, for doing these things to me, as hurt as I was, I said, you know what? I'm not going to allow the devil to destroy my testimony. I'm not going to walk away and let the devil ruin something that God had built up. He used this woman. Yes, he did. He used it. He used this woman and this man and everyone who's come up against me to hurt me. And they've allowed themselves to be used because they held on to unforgiveness. They held on to pain and they refused to come to God to be healed and delivered. No, it's not God who is hurting us every day. Even though we might think it is him, it's not God who is hurting us. Yes, sometimes he does not intervene and sometimes he does allow certain things to happen. Sometimes he does not rescue us because he wants us to experience these things so we can help others who are hurting. He also wants those who have appointed to help to start intervening and helping and standing up on our behalf. He is just not something that we can just rub a genie that comes out and just stops us. Yes, he's a God who's supposed to protect us. That is why we're supposed to pray for ourselves each day. That is why we're supposed to minister to others. And when there are people who are in help, who are, who are needing help, who have been hurt and abused, we're supposed to minister to them and help them and pray for them. And that's when I realized, you know, this woman needs help. She's very disturbed. And, and, and those who have failed to, to help her, they should be held accountable because you don't let someone, a family member or a loved one that you care about just, just self-destruct when you know that they have been hurt. You're supposed to be helping them. You're supposed to be encouraging them to come to God. You're supposed to be encouraging them to get the help and therapy and counseling, whatever they need, even if it isn't counseling. I mean, we go by, the world likes to go get counseling. But you know, when you're a Christian, you look at Jesus Christ as the physician and the healer. Like I said, a lot of these things are perverse spirits. These are demonic spirits that are inside people that make them act a certain way. And when you don't get help, if you don't seek help from God or you don't seek help from man or however else, how do you expect to change? How do you expect to stop doing what you're doing? How do you expect the cycle to end? If everybody who's been abused just, just gets a license and a pass to go out and abuse everybody, would, would the whole world would be abused and hurt it and hurting? Does it ever stop? That's the thing. It can't stop. And you know, as the, as, as as those who are in positions of authority in the law enforcement and, and the government, they have an obligation, a duty to protect the citizens. I've spoken out about this before and they want to do everything in their power to cover it up, but covering it up and not talking about it is not helping anyone. We all know that sorcery exists. We all know that magic and witchcraft exists. Like I said, a lot of people won't experience the extreme things, but there are people who are sick out here who have taken it to another level, who have taken it to the extreme forms. And these things, someone needs to intervene and step in. Now, I'm telling my story because you know what? This has happened to me. I've been a victim and I will not allow anyone to, to, to bully me into silence or to discredit my testimony or my experience. And that is why I'm speaking out about this today, even though there's a good chance that as a result of me speaking out and saying these things, I could have someone retaliate against me and say, oh, well, you know what? You can't visit with your daughter anymore because they've been retaliating against me for the longest. But you know what? Covering things up is not going to help anyone get the help that they need. And when you have disturbed, mentally ill people out here to the point where they want to go in someone's home and violate them in the middle of the night, something needs to be done about that. And these people need to be taking the steps also to get the help that they need. If you can come in my house and pink slip me and say all these things about me and force me into a mental institution, you should be going out there, going after the real people who really, truly need help, who are, are, are complete danger to themselves and others. And I'm, I'm sharing this because, you know, I don't want to cover it up. 
A lot of people don't experience this. As I said, a lot of people won't ever experience it, but it is something that is happening. And no matter how small a percentage of people who are being affected by this, there are people who are being affected and they need to be helped. And those who are doing these things need to be helped. They need to be delivered and they need to be healed. So I have forgiven the persons who have done these things to me. I have, with the help of God, I have let it go. And I suggest you, if you've been a victim of this also, that you would go to God and seek help, that you would be able to forgive those who have hurt you. That is how it starts. The cycle has to end. And that's all I want to say. Thank you.